On the other hand, if you're a guy that throws really fast but can't throw a strike, come on, get your stuff together. We need them both. We need it all together. Hey guys, real quick before we get into this video, I wanna show you something really cool and it's these portable pitching mounds available at yougoprobaseball.com. Check the link down below. We've got five different sizes, three of them available in the pro version. We've got the six inch tall, eight inch tall, and 10 inch tall in the 30 inch wide version. We also have the six inch tall and the eight inch tall in the 40 inch wide version, the extra wide. Check them out at the link below, yougoprobaseball.com. They fold up, they're easy to move, awesome portable pitching mounts, check them out. In this video, we're talking about seven things pitchers must have, and some of these things aren't talked about all the time, so I really kinda wanna dig deep into those areas. The first thing I wanna talk about is mound presence. That just means how you look, your energy, what the batter's seeing when you're on the mound. If you're walking around up here like this with your shoulders rolled over and you're like, oh, I can't throw a strike today, I'm not very good. That's not very great mound presence. You have to have good mound presence. Good mound presence is when you're standing tall, your chest is out, your chin is up. You're looking at that guy, you're looking at that batter. I used to spit at them, not on them, but at them when I'm looking at them like, all right, sucker, what you got, let's go. You know, I wouldn't say that out loud, but that's what I was thinking in my mind. And that, in turn, gave me good mound presence. I was tall, I was big, and when I threw that pitch, I was grunting and I would walk up and grab that ball from the catcher and look at the batter and get back up here and work fast, okay? That's number two, let's work fast, okay? When you're working slow, you know, they put a rule in baseball now that these guys have to work a little bit faster, right? Sometimes there's time clock, right? If you're working slow, you're team your defense is going to get lazy back there work fast have that good mound presence and work fast get the ball get back up on the mound get the sign from the catcher and go let's go we're out here to win we're out here to compete we're out here to get these guys out and if you're working fast you're going to build that good energy too and your defense is going to be ready more often than not when you're working fast number three is stuff right you got to have good stuff as a pitcher makes sense you can't just go up there and throw meatballs down the middle all the time you got to have good pitches you got to have those pitches that move okay so that's number three work on your stuff number four is location accuracy command whatever you want to call it i use those words interchangeably i know some pitching coaches don't like to and they argue about command and accuracy whatever throw the ball where you know you're trying to throw the ball if you're able to do that then you're going to be successful right if you have the stuff and you're able to control that and throw it where you want to you're going to have a lot of success right number five is going to be velocity we talk about velocity all the time pitching velocity obviously if you've got the stuff and you've got the control command accuracy and all that remains equal if you can throw that faster you're going to be better right okay so i know a lot of people get into the argument command is better than velocity guess what you gotta have both of them let's work on both of them okay don't just say command is better because you throw very good with that with your accuracy and you throw slow on the other hand if you're a guy that throws really fast but can't throw a strike Come on, get your stuff together. We need them both. We need it all together. Number six is the ability to disrupt the batter's timing and his balance. What does that mean? That means you have to have good secondary pitches. This kind of goes back into stuff, but if you got a good fastball, which you know that's the first pitch we learned, so hopefully you got a good fastball. If you don't, you might want to go play soccer. So we got the good fastball, then we work on a good off-speed pitch, okay? Usually the first off-speed pitch guys learn is a changeup, right? So now, if we have those two pitches, we're able to disrupt the batter's timing and balance. How do we disrupt the batter's timing? We throw a fast pitch, the fastball, and a slow pitch, the changeup, right? Now his timing is off. How do we disrupt his balance? We throw pitches in, we throw pitches out, we throw pitches up, we throw pitches down. Now, if we can do a combination of those two things, we're really gonna have that batter confused, right? What if we throw a fastball up and in, and then a change up low and away? That's a tough, tough pitch combination to hit as a hitter, especially if you're coming up here, right, with a fastball and then low and away. You think that guy wants to dig in after you just threw your fastest pitch up here, and now he's like, oh, I'm gonna get that low and away change up next. No, heck no, he's like, this guy almost hit me, right? So when you think about pitching as disrupting the batter's timing and balance, you're gonna have a lot of success. Number seven, and the last thing, maybe one of the most important things that's not talked about a lot is visualization. Visualize, visualize yourself having success. Visualize yourself the night before dominating the team that you're about to face, right? Lay there in bed and just close your eyes and, and get good. The more real that you can make it in your head, the more chance of it coming true. 
I was a huge, I was huge into visualization. In fact, I talk a lot about in some of my other videos about visualizing yourself throwing bullpens, right? There was a guy, a study they did on a guy in Australia, I think it was, he was throwing darts with his left hand and they measured the distance to the bullseye. And for one month, all he was allowed to do was visual. By the way, he was right-handed and they made him throw left-handed. One month, he was allowed to visualize for five minutes a day, throwing darts lefty and hitting the bullseye. He wasn't allowed to pick up a dart. At the end of the month, he picked up a dart with his left hand again, threw however many darts, same, same as the first time. And his distance was twice as close and all he did was visualize same thing goes for just having overall success you could throw those five minute bullpens in your head every night or every day while you're waiting on practice to start whatever it is but at night before a big game visualize beating that team already visualize yourself have that feeling up there like you're feeling strong you have that visceral energy running through your body while you're laying there and you can feel like when you throw that pitch and strike them out visualize the colors of their jerseys the more real you can make it the more chance is going to happen man and i tell you what believe it or not you can you can say this is heebie-jeebie voodoo woo -woo, whatever all this stuff but i'm telling you when i was deep into visualization i had a lot a lot of success and a lot of times the things that i thought and believed in came true that next day in that big game give it a try man Who's gonna know? You're laying there in bed, you're laying there in the grass before the game, no one's gonna know. Maybe they think you're taking a nap, you lazy bum. But visualize, right? It's very, very important. So there you go, I think that was seven. Seven things all pitchers must do. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, you know, give me a thumbs up. If, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I don't really care at this point. We just broke 200,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Leave a comment down below. And you know, if you have a young player who's a pitcher, share this video with him. My dad used to leave, we had magazines at the time, you know, there wasn't this online stuff, but he used to leave like magazine articles about pitching on my bed when I was, you know, in around the high school age and stuff. And then he would be talking about that article to people around the community and stuff. And I would like, listen, a lot of times I didn't read it right at first, you know, because hey, people don't want to listen to dad. And I'm sure if you're a dad watching this, you understand your son doesn't want to listen to dad. They want to listen to coach or they want to listen to, to their peers mostly. But you know, he would leave that magazine article and eventually I heard him talking to other people about it. I wanted to know what was in there. So I was part of the conversation. I've read a lot of those and I learned a lot from that. So. If you found this video valuable, maybe share it. Maybe your son's not gonna watch it right now, but maybe one day when he sees it in his inbox or the notification pop up, maybe he'll see it. Maybe he'll get one thing out of it. And if he gets one thing out of it, he could be one step better. You know, it could make all the difference. So thank you again, guys. I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one.